So, 10 inch server racks. They're a great way to keep your mini PCs and other assorted home lab hardware like switches and single board computers tidy and organized without taking up the space of a full 19 inch rack. They're compact and affordable, and I have two of them here. The one on the left I built myself a few months ago, and the one on the right is the DeskPi Rackmate T1. In this video, then, we're going to take a look at the Rackmate T1 and compare it to the one I built myself, taking into consideration price, ease of assembly, build quality, and features. This will, therefore, serve as both a review of the DeskPi Rack, as well as offering some of my opinions on whether it's worth buying or building a 10-inch rack currently. I must, of course, mention that DeskPi sent me the Rackmate T1 free of charge as a review sample and no money changed hands. I was not paid to cover this product, they will not see this review prior to publication, and all opinions are my own. DeskPi has not sponsored this video. So, we'll take a look at the DeskPi rack, but first we'll need a few more shelves and accessories for it, such as these two shelves, this mini PC mount, network switch mount, patch panel, and 40mm fan mount, all of which were printed for me by JLC PCB's 3D printing service, JLC 3DP, who have sponsored this video. JLC 3DP provides easy, affordable, and reliable 3D printing solutions, making it simple to produce bespoke parts like this shelf specifically designed to fit this mini PC, or this mount for five 40mm fans. JLC 3DP has 13,000 square meters of factory area dedicated to over 550 3D printers, with rapid turnaround and lightning fast production. Ordering with JLC 3DP is easy and quick. Just upload your STL files to get an instant quote and a great selection of available materials, including a variety of resins, nylon, conventional plastics, and even metal printing. JLC 3DP's efficient, large-scale production reduces costs and brings you unbeatable prices, and the quality of the 3D printed parts is excellent. JLC 3DP has partnered with top logistics companies, including DHL and FedEx, to provide fast and efficient shipping. Their 3D printing service starts at less than a dollar, and they offer a variety of coupon discounts for all of their services, meaning you can get your parts produced quickly and affordably. Find JLC 3DP's links in the description. What you can also find in the description is all the links to the 3D prints I used in this video. The DeskPi Rackmate T1 is an 8 unit tall, 10 inch or half width mini rack, which at the time of writing costs 120 US dollars on the DeskPi website. These half width racks have become rather popular for home labs over the last couple of years, almost certainly because the 10 inch rack format is really useful for organizing mini PCs, single board computers, and other assorted small hardware. Full-sized 19-inch racks, even shallow network racks, are pretty big, and with the massive increase in the availability of high-performance, high-efficiency mini PCs, they're falling out of favor for a lot of home-use cases. You simply don't need all that space to get all the performance anymore. A few months ago, I showed you how you could build your own one, which is what this is. It's the one I built, and it'll come up more later in the video when we compare the DeskPi with currently available DIY options. Included with the DeskPi, other than the rack itself and associated hardware for assembling it, is three 1U rack blanks, a shelf designed for a pair of single board computers, two PCBs for Raspberry Pis, and a 1U shelf including rear supports, which make it rather useful for heavier hardware like DAS or NAS units. I personally found the assembly of the Rackmate T1 rather easy, and in total I think it took roughly 15 to 20 minutes to assemble the first time. The instructions were very clear and I found them easy to follow, no doubt helped by the fairly simple design. The required tools for assembly, a hex driver and a Phillips screwdriver are both included in the box and all of the screws can be installed with just these two tools, although I would recommend that you use a larger Phillips screwdriver to install the shelves, as the small one isn't great for these larger 1032 screws. In my opinion, the design is rather nice. The grey acrylic sides and the top look nice together, and I think they complement the aluminium frame well. Also, notably, the acrylic top piece came with the protective paper still stuck on, which obviously protects it from damage in the factory and in shipping, but more importantly, it's very satisfying to peel off. I unfortunately didn't film that, but you'll have to take my word for it. Something to consider when assembling it is to take care to install these horizontal bars at the top the correct way up, because if they're flipped upside down, you'll still be able to install them, but they'll protrude into the space of the top rack unit and prevent you from installing certain things correctly. 
While the correct orientation is shown in the instructions, it's not explicitly mentioned, it's just in the pictures, so I believe it could be an easy mistake to make. And I did find a handful of instances of people online having made that mistake and then not being sure why. When these are installed correctly, the rack functions as intended, so it's not really a major issue at all, just something to keep in mind when assembling it. Unfortunately, with this specific unit, I found that one of the rubber feet, as well as the screw that holds it in place, was completely missing. The feet aren't just stuck on, but have a screw through them, so they are certainly secure, which is a bit of design that I do like. It's just a shame that one of them was missing. It wasn't anywhere in the box, nor was it in the bags of screws, so this doesn't appear to be a case of me not being able to find it or having lost it myself. They do come pre-installed on the side panels, so it was just not there. I think it would be good if DeskPy included an extra screw and a rubber foot, as there's spare screws included for most of the rest of the rack in case you lose one or two, but no spare rubber foot. Other than the missing rubber foot, everything else listed in the manual was included in the box, which is generally a good sign. While I could have contacted them via email and requested a replacement foot, I honestly just forgot to, and I still would have mentioned it anyway, even if I'd done that. Moving on to the rack hardware, I do quite like the design of the included shelf, specifically the two brackets which support it from the rear of the rack. I don't know how strong the tabs on these brackets are, but they seem to work well and I haven't noticed any issues with them. This allows me to install heavier hardware such as a DAS or NAS loaded with hard drives without any concern of the shelf sagging, so I think it's a good design and I'm very happy with it. The other included rack accessories are generally quite good too. Three blanks are always useful, and the shelf design for Raspberry Pis and other SPCs, as well as these two little boards for the power and video on those, is a neat idea and makes sense, considering DeskPi's product line, other than 10-inch racks, contains a lot of Raspberry Pi and single board computer accessories. Unfortunately, I won't be able to demonstrate the shelf or these boards in this video, because I don't have a modern Raspberry Pi, and at their current price I can't unfortunately justify purchasing one. These boards just extend the Raspberry Pi's USB-C and HDMI from the side of the Pi to the front of the rack, and convert the mini HDMI to full-sized HDMI, and I think that's a good idea. They're probably very useful, but unfortunately I can't demonstrate that. While these accessories are generally very good, I personally would have preferred to see a second of these full-size shelves included instead of three blanks. That's not to say the inclusion of the blanks is bad, and they can be quite useful, but in my opinion, I don't think they are as necessary as shelves, and replacing some of them with another shelf would personally, I think, be preferable, especially at this price point. It's not a major issue, just something to keep in mind, because you'll almost certainly have to buy, or 3D print, more shelves to get the most out of this. Also, you could obviously use the SBC shelf for literally anything, it just has SBC specific mounting holes and hardware included, but I don't think that quite makes up for it in my opinion. Again though, the included hardware itself is quite good, and you can always get more, but I think the ratio of blanks to proper shelves isn't amazing. The reason for me bringing this up, then, is that with only 8 units in the rack, I am inclined to suggest that most users will very easily fill that space with their own lab hardware, as a NAS or DAS takes up a little bit less than half of the space, leaving the space in the top halves for a selection of mini PCs, maybe some Raspberry Pis, and a basically mandatory network switch, as well as a patch panel, which, while useful, isn't required. That is to say, it isn't difficult to fill the space, so I think a second shelf would be a good inclusion. Obviously, you don't have to fill the bottom half of the rack with a DAS or a NAS, but it's a good way to keep it enclosed, and especially with a DAS, that's going to have to be connected to a computer anyway, so why not put it with the computer in the rack? Speaking of shelves, it's time to install some hardware in the rack. When I wrote this video initially, I had planned on installing a 120mm fan in the bottom, but I don't actually have one at the moment. Anyway, there's space for either a single 120mm fan or two 80mm fans on this bottom plate, but keep in mind that standard PC case fans will require some kind of speed controller, because they're designed to run from motherboards normally. Obviously you can buy USB fans, but the quality of those I found varies. Next is this Terramaster DAS that I reviewed earlier this year on the included metal shelf, and above that a 3D printed shelf, which for now will hold this Wise 5070 like that. Next is the Prodesk J3 Mini in a specially designed 3D printed mount. This 
small 2.5 gigabit network switch, also in a specially designed 3D printed mount just for it. And finally, this 3D printed patch panel at the top. 3D printing is a great way to make shelves that suit the hardware you have, since there's a lot you can print that isn't generally going to be available off the shelf, say on Amazon or in stores, and plenty of people have posted great designs online that you can download and print. You can also design your own stuff if you know how. In the rear, for now, it'll just be this 3D printed fan mount, designed for five 40mm fans, although I'll have to get a few more since I only seem to have one spare at the moment. In terms of powering everything, I haven't yet found a proper solution, although I most likely will just purchase a cheap power board and attach it to the back of the rack with zip ties. Unfortunately, there's no good rack mountable PDU solution for the Australian market yet, but those do exist for Europe and the United States. Cable management will also need some consideration, although obviously I haven't plugged everything in just yet because there's a few things I don't have yet for this setup, and that means it isn't really finalized. Rather, I've set it up like this just to demonstrate the rack, and I may make a video in the future actually showing off what I'm going to do with it. Something I did notice when installing all of this in the rack is that I didn't really have enough screws. There's 24 screws included for installing shelves, but I think it really needs about half a dozen more included in the box. With all the stuff I've included in the rack already, I found I didn't have an adequate number of screws for everything I wanted to install in the rear, because I had planned on using the included planks not on the front, but on the back, so I could zip tie power bricks to them. Suddenly, that's not an intended use case for the planks, but I have an awful pile of power bricks that'll go into this setup, so it'll no doubt be necessary. Anyway, point is that I think if DeskPy included some extra screws, that'd be really great, because they will sell you a pack of more of them for only a couple dollars, which does raise the question of why they're not just included. The problem is effectively just that with this setup, there's nothing really installed in the bottom of the rack except for the DAS unit, and if you went with, if you tried to fill this out top to bottom, you'd run out of screws. That's, that's the problem. There should be more of them in the box. Speaking of the screws, they're also not all metric. The screws used to hold the frame together, such as these here and the ones holding the sh handles in, are all m 4s but the screws for installing the shelves are 1032s, as in imperial sizing, which I have no idea what those numbers mean, but sure. This is, I think, an odd choice, considering how close these are to M5 screws, but I can't really think of a reason for going with 1032 screws, except that probably the vast majority of these will be sold in the United States, and they're way easier to get there. I don't think it's a big deal, just something to keep in mind, since, at least for me, there weren't really enough included, and they're kind of a pain to buy, at least in normal hardware stores here. Anyway, screw sizes aren't really that important, I just thought I'd mention them as something to keep in mind. And that's not a big deal compared to what we're going to look at next. Put simply, the entire thing is really flexible, like, like, like this. And I'm not when I do that lifting it off the table, it's staying flat on the table, the whole thing just sort of wobbles. The point is that the build quality of the Rackmate T1 is a significant point of concern for me. While it doesn't struggle with the weight of the hardware like the DAS, fully loaded with hard drives, it does have this significant flexing issue side to side. This was not alleviated by installing shelves or blanks in any place on the rack, because the oval shaped screw holes for those simply allow them to shift left and right just enough that they don't provide any rigidity. There are a few notable factors contributing to this issue. Firstly, the top horizontal bars are only attached with a single screw, which provides a pivot point rather than a secure attachment. Secondly, there are no equivalent bottom bars included, as they have to be purchased separately, like these ones up here, but for the bottom. And finally, the only part securing the two sides at the bottom is the flat metal fan mount, which is very flexible, and unsurprisingly it's just a flat piece of stamped sheet metal. I'm not going to gloss over this issue, I am personally very disappointed with it at this price point. The amount of flexibility in a design like this, I think, is not good. This is my main point of concern with the build quality of this. There are other elements, especially the top handles, that feel solidly attached and I think are designed quite well, and that's well enough so that it doesn't concern me to lift it with the shelves and computers installed in it. While it has redeeming elements in terms of build quality and design, I am not particularly impressed with this. And yes, I ensured all the screws were tightened. No matter what I did, I couldn't get it to not do that. 
Anyway, I think now a comparison with DIY rack options would also be useful, as there's a few trade-offs in both cases, and those may be a significant part of deciding which route to take. There are, of course, more options than just the timber rack I built, including using 3D printing, aluminium extrusion, and people have been for years using inexpensive flatpak IKEA cabinets as server racks. What you get with the rack mate is rather obvious. It's a mostly complete solution for a 10 inch home lab rack and is very easy to assemble and use. It's not perfect in a few ways, but I found it very user friendly and easy to assemble, but it comes at a cost of 120 US dollars, which I personally think is expensive, but not unjustified. The DIY options come with a variety of trade-offs and considerations. And in the case of the one I built, it's mostly the time investment and effort required, although that latter issue can be mitigated by using power tools, saws and sanders instead of hand tools and sandpaper as I did. It also has the issue of being not very well built because of my lack of experience in woodworking. The main trade-off of a fully 3D printed rack, which is another option, is needing a 3D printer. And while many people have them now, plenty of people, including me, don't. The other trade-off with 3D printed designs is that they may potentially have a lower weight capacity for heavier devices such as NAS or DAS units, although that depends on the specifics of the design and the chosen print material, but it is something that I would personally keep in mind. There's also aluminium extrusion, but I can't comment on the specific upsides or downsides of it for this use case because I've never built a server rack out of it. Finally, there's a bunch of other options such as IKEA cabinets, which are affordable, but may require some modifications because that's obviously not their intended use case. That DIY element though is a really key element of home labbing, and I think building one yourself or adapting something like uh, an IKEA cabinet is a really good option. There's a few key upsides to the rack mate though, the first of which is the mounting points on both the front and the rear, unlike the rack I built. That's entirely because I didn't bother getting a second pair of rails, and that would have increased the price slightly, but it would be very easy to add those to the rear of the rack. These rear mounting points on the rack mate do mean you can install something like a PDU in the rear or a fan mount such as this one. Obviously, you'll get that with aluminium extrusion racks and with 3D printed ones if the design supports that. The key point of comparison then is the price and the ease of assembly. The Rackmate T1 is more expensive but significantly easier to build, and a DIY rack will generally be cheaper as mine was, considering it cost around 65 US dollars. But as was seen in the video where I built it, it does take substantially more time and effort to build, but I had the time and it was cheaper. Ultimately then, the correct 10 inch rack option for you comes down to whether you want a more expensive but more user friendly product that works out of the box, such as this one, or whether you want something cheaper and generally more customizable, which may take substantially more effort to build or require a 3D printer. The Rackmate T1 is, in my opinion, an acceptable option that does work well as a mini rack, but is let down by the selection of included accessories, limited number of included screws, and the rather disappointing build quality issues, specifically the notable flexing of the entire frame as seen earlier. In terms of the build quality issue, DIY racks aren't necessarily going to be the solution to this. The timber rack I built is substantially stronger than the Rackmate T1, strong enough that I can comfortably and safely stand on it with no issue, but that won't necessarily be the case with other options. I wouldn't want to do that with a 3D printed rack, nor with the Rackmate, but that's not the intended use case of either of those options, and in terms of the 3D printed rack, you don't do that with 3D printed plastic, it's not meant for that. While I'm not covering all of those other options in depth here, they're not all going to be better in terms of this flexibility issue. That is to say, the build quality of the Rackmate T1 isn't perfect, but I personally can't say that every alternative option will be better, except for of course the one that I built myself. All of the options I've mentioned then have upsides and downsides, and while I wasn't able to cover them all in depth here, it's important to keep them in mind when purchasing, and of course, do your research. My conclusion on the Rackmate T1 then is that in spite of the handful of minor and more significant issues, it's a decent option for those looking for an easy to assemble, user-friendly 10 inch server rack. It comes at a higher cost than DIY options, which as has been seen from my own timber rack build, was substantially cheaper although the price varies significantly based on the cost of the materials used to build it. I would suggest keeping the limitations of the rack made in mind if purchasing it, because even though it's not perfect, I do still think it's a reasonable option. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time.